Uh, we were discussing how to make common source amplifiers with a PMOS transistor and I had asked you to essentially implement this signal picture using a PMOS transistor biased at VSD of 3 volts and VSD of 4 volts okay from a 24 volt supply. So, first this is the biasing picture we need, but with a single supply which is 24 volts. Now, VSD of 3 volts can be obtained by having let us say uh, 2 resistors in the ratio 3 to 21 ok so, and that is applied across the source and gate. So, VSD here will be 3 volts ok and then the drain has to be connected to the lower rail in this case. In case of the NMOS we used to connect it to the upper rail, we have to connect it through some uh, drain bias R D and in this particular transistor we know that if we have 3 volt VSD what is the drain current? How much? 200 microamperes. So, if we have 4 volts across the source and drain across R D we will have 20 volts. So, what should be the value of R D? 100 kilo ohms. Okay. What's up? Sorry, what is that? I no, I want to have VSD of uh, 3 volts, right? Now, if I connect a resistor here, then VSD will no longer be 3 volts, ok. It will be 3 minus the voltage drop across this if it is on, ok. Huh? You could po possibly adjust those resistors, but finally, ok. I also want to have this signal picture. I want to realize a common source amplifier right. So, the source has to be grounded. So, then I have to make arrangements for the source to be grounded and so on ok. So, it is possible like some other ways of biasing, but this is what is analogous to what we first discussed the constant VGS bias ok. This is the voltage is the voltage between source and gate here is fixed to 3 volts ok. Now, we have the input source V i r s and the load R l which is 100 kilo ohms ok. So, the input voltage must get applied to the gate or between gate source. So, how do we do that? I just connect it through a capacitor that is all. then the load also through another capacitor ok. Is this fine? So, this is a PMOS common source amplifier and if you draw the complete signal picture you will find that complete small signal picture you will have V i R s and then you have additionally a bias resistance of value 3 mega ohm parallel 21 mega ohm and you will have the load of uh, 100 kilo ohms. Additionally, you also have the drain bias resistor of 100 kilo ohms.
belongs, which we can't avoid. Okay. So this is our uh, uh, PMOS common source amplifier. What will be the gain of the amplifier with our with RS equals zero? Ten, right? Minus ten. So the output voltage will be minus ten times VI. If RS is zero, otherwise there will be some division between RS and uh, the gate bias resistors. So, small signal wise there is no difference between uh, using a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor. Okay. Any difference can be in the parameters because mu C aux is different and V T is different and so on. But now we have adjusted the size of the PMOS transistor so that its trans conductance is exactly same as the NMOS at the same bias current and so on. Okay. So, we get similar behavior and just like this any other amplifier can be made either with NMOS or PMOS. And because the PMOS mobility is smaller, you will have to use bigger PMOS transistors than NMOS transistors for the same performance. Okay? Otherwise, they are similar. What, what is the difference? What could be the difference between PMOS and NMOS common source amplifiers? Small signal wise, there is no difference. What else could be a difference? Which DC offset? Yeah, and we, because we are using AC coupling, that is not relevant. Okay. Please evaluate the swing limits of the circuit. Okay. So, as before uh, you have two limits one due to the transistor going into triode region and one due to the transistor going to cut off. For the cut off use the total drain, uh, drain current criterion not based on VSG, but based on the total ID just like we did with the NMOS case. Okay. So, and just do it systematically we have uh, you evaluate the operating point, you evaluate the signal picture, add the signal to the operating point and set the appropriate limits. Okay? Please do that. What do you get as the answers? What is the lower limit? Minus 2 by 11. Upper limit? 1. What did we get for the NMOS case? Yeah. So, what happens is in the NMOS case, as the input swings up, the drain will swing down and it approaches triode region. Here it is the opposite. As the input becomes more and more positive, the gate goes up, VSG reduces, it moves towards cutoff. Okay? And as the input becomes more and more negative, this falls down and the drain voltage goes up, it moves towards triode region. So, the only difference between PMOS and NMOS will be this, that the swing limits will be flipped, that is all. Okay? Uh, The quiescent drain current is 200 microamperes and this is in the case of PMOS, so it flows from source to drain. So, the important difference is that the increment is minus G m V G s okay? and in this case that is minus 200 microamperes times V i and the rest of the stuff remains the same. V s g is the operating point voltage is 3 volts and the increment how much is that? minus minus V i okay? and V s d it is 4 volts and yeah. So, it is G m R d parallel R l times V i or plus 10 times V i. So, from these two we apply the condition that 4 volt plus 10 V i must be greater than or equal to 3 volts minus V i minus 1 volt. Okay? So, this will give you V i to be greater than or equal to minus 2 by 11 right? volts and this we see that 200 micro amperes plus oh sorry minus 200 micro Siemens 200 micro Siemens times V i should be greater than or equal to 0. So, V i should be less than 1 volt. Okay? So, it is flipped. The reason it is flipped is because 
the voltages and currents in the PMOS transistors are reversed, but the input is still referred to the lower rail and the load is also referred to the lower rail. Okay? That is because we want to operate with a single supply voltage. I will explain that in a moment. Okay? Is this clear? So, if you want to uh, now let us say you have some signal picture that you do not know, I mean maybe you derived something new and then you want to implement that using PMOS, you should be able to do it. You should be able to set up any type of biasing in the PMOS transistor and combine it with the signal picture. Just be careful about the drain and source and the flip pi flipped picture and so on that is all. Now, we can do this for every circuit that we have derived. We would not do that because there is a once you know NMOS circuits, there is a clean way in which you can write down the PMOS circuits. Okay? So, let me again take some example. So, let me take an NMOS common source amplifier with source feedback bias okay? just for illustration. So, I will write the complete picture including the supply and so on. and we will call the lower rail the ground. Okay? This is arbitrary, but this is what is used most frequently. So, I will use that. So, that means that uh, one terminal of the input source and one terminal of the load has to be connected to the lower rail. Okay? Okay. Now, let us say that first initially we will assume that NMOS and PMOS have exactly the same parameters except of course, the reversal of polarity in the currents. Now, I just want a PMOS counterpart of this circuit. What should I do? It should be biased in exactly the same way. Okay, my NMOS design is working, and I have a PMOS transistor with exactly the same parameters. Current factor is the same as the NMOS current factor. Threshold voltage is the same as uh, PMOS. Sorry, NMOS threshold voltage. So what I want now is a circuit using PMOS. It should have exactly the same operating points, and of course, it should work properly. So what should I do? Hmm. So, I have my PMOS. Huh? And I, I again, I do not want to worry about what particular circuit this is, and basically, I do not want to use any brains, right? I just want to, uh, I have this circuit, I just want the PMOS one, I want an algorithm. Oh, the current source of the drain, that is a different circuit, right? What is that? What what is the difference between NMOS and PMOS? What did I say? Was just direction of polarities of voltages and currents are different. So what should I do here? So I have to I change the polarity of that and I reverse the polarity of this. Okay, and then I take out the NMOS and put in the PMOS. Of course, with the corresponding terminals. This is the source. This is the drain, and this is the gate. Okay. So, will the circuit work? Why not? Yeah, that is the only thing. But if it was, I mean, if I could call this the ground, right? Potentially, a ground is a arbitrary thing. I mean. I could have a circuit in which the upper rail, the most positive voltage is called the ground instead of the most negative voltage or something in the middle. It is completely up to me. Okay? So, this transformation because see uh, to establish the correct operating point in the PMOS, it will have exactly opposite polarity to that in the NMOS. So, all I do is the independent voltage and current sources in the circuit, not the signal sources, the sources that establish the operating point, I reverse the polarity. Okay? So, now 
uh, if I call this the ground, now remember this is the positive rail of the uh, circuit. Okay, if originally I was using a 24 volt uh, supply, this would be 0 volt and originally this was 24 volts, now this has become minus 24 volts. So, essentially I am operating with a negative supply, okay. But this circuit will work, right. So, whatever V naught by V i you had before, you will have it now, okay. And this uh, algorithm will work for any circuit, not just for this common source amplifier. Anything all you do is, whatever uh, independent sources you have for establishing the operating point, you reverse the polarity, that is all that is there to it, okay. And substitute the PMOS by NMOS. Now, if the PMOS parameters are exactly same as NMOS parameters, that is current factors are the same and threshold voltages are the same, the transfer function will also be the same. If the parameters are different as they are likely to be, okay, this circuit will be topologically correct, but you may have to adjust some values, okay. Maybe you have to change the gate bias voltage or the bias current to get the correct value of GM and so on, or maybe you have to change the size of PMOS transistor, but topologically it will be valid, okay. Now, this is fine. The problem is now we have our NMOS circuits with the bottom rail as ground and PMOS circuit with the upper rail, the more positive voltage is ground. We do not want to have that. Typically in a CMOS circuit, we operate with a single supply. That is, we want to call the lower rail the ground and upper rail something, some positive voltage and both PMOS and NMOS circuits must operate in that way, okay. Now, what does that mean? It makes a difference only for the uh, input source and the ground, uh, input source and the load because they are representations of uh, what come from other circuits. So, one of their terminals has to be grounded. No, for the load also, see the point is when I say ground referenced, I put the symbol here, right. That means that RL should be connected to that, okay. That is all. So, that is the common ground of the circuit, okay. This circuit will work, there is no problem. If you have a resistance that can be connected this way, it will work. But now, if I call this the ground, you can see that one terminal of RL is no longer grounded. The circuit will still work, okay. Meaning, if you measure the voltage across this, that will be GM times RD parallel RL times VI. That part is still fine. The only thing is, you do not want RL to be connected this way, that is all. Okay, and similarly, you do not want V A to be connected that way. Is that okay? So, what should I do for that? All, I mean, because after all, it is AC coupled. I don't have to really do anything. Okay, so I just connect it up that way, and that's all that's there to it. Okay, because remember, small signal wise, this was ground and that was ground. So, it makes no difference if I connect V i to this point or that point. Similarly, R l can be connected either through this point or that point. Is that okay? Now, this second part of the modification where we connect the ground reference of uh, the input source and the load, that is because we want to operate all circuits whether it is NMOS or PMOS with a single supply voltage, okay. Otherwise, I mean you can have two supplies, one which is positive with respect to ground operate all NMOS circuits with that and negative supply with respect to ground operate all PMOS circuits with that. Uh, it is redundant and completely unnecessary, so we can do it like this, okay. Now, the second step is the reason why the swing limits are reversed, okay. So, if we had the circuit like this, that is as I after the first modification step, if I had it like this, the swing limit of this also would be exactly the same as the NMOS. That is, if I take the previous example, the upper swing limit would be 2 by 11 volts and lower swing limit would be minus 2 by sorry minus 1 volt. But because we change the ground reference of the input, essentially we are uh, reversing the polarity of the signal that is applied to the circuit, the swing limits will be reversed that is all, okay. So, any PMOS circuit that you have, sorry any NMOS circuit that you have, you can find the PMOS counterpart. And of course, if you derive a new circuit with PMOS, you can also make the NMOS counterpart of it. Now, you can mix and match, there is a lot of freedom and it is especially important while using direct coupling. That is when you do not use AC coupling between stages, you have to make sure that the output bias of one stage has compatible with the input bias of the other stage, okay. So, if you have only NMOS, it may be restricted. If you have PMOS, you have more room to play, okay. Is this fine? Everything, any circuit and by the way, I mean 
you can have a circuit with like 10 n MOS and 5 p MOS transistor and its counterpart will be 1 with 10 p MOS and 5 n MOS transistor. The polarity of everything can be reversed right. This by this does not apply to tra circuits with a single uh, transistor ok. For instance, this could have been implemented using a transistor n MOS current mirror. I can now use a p MOS current mirror to bias the same thing ok. For everything it works ok. So, I do not want to go through like every one of the circuits we have discussed before and then show p MOS versions of it. This is the algorithm. So, we will show some examples, but please uh, uh, work it out for yourself and it is very easy to generate new problems because you can look at all the old problems and make PMOS versions of the same. Yes. So, I want to call this the ground ok, the lower rail. So, this is the lower potential, this is the higher potential. I want to call this the ground and I want to connect it there that is all. Which one? This is not I mean when I call this the ground, this is at uh, 0 and this is at plus 24 volts ok. So, it is connected to this line, it is connected to this upper line basically that is all ok. And then the way we normally draw circuits is the lowest potential at the bottom and goes up. Usually this is the case, sometimes you cannot do that, but usually that is the case. So, that is why this circuit the way it is normally drawn would look like that. I am keeping the same notation as And this you could connect it either here, it is a capacitor after all or you can connect it to the ground, it does not matter. Okay. Is this fine? So, the algorithm is quite simple, you first reverse the sources the independent sources used for establishing bias and that will be some fixed uh, voltage sources and fixed current sources ok. And then uh, that is all that is there to it, but then uh, usually you call the lower potential the ground. So, you make that the ground and connect the ground reference of the input source as well as the load to that and draw the picture upside down. So, that it looks more mysterious and more confusing ok. Now, it is generally confusing right. I mean there are uh, although there is symmetry I mean the way we learn things it is always uh, p MOS is more confusing than n MOS, inductors are more confusing than capacitors, magnetic field is more difficult than electric field and so on is not it. Somehow we learn, always learn one thing first and something else later and the first thing is more easy than the second one, but uh, hopefully you will be fluent enough with both. So, now we can quickly convert some example circuits into uh, PMOS, but you should be able to do this for yourself. But let us say you are confused, I would say that you draw every picture without skipping any step ok, while keeping the corresponding terminals. I mean maybe even mark it like source, gate and drain, so that you do not make wrong connections. Do not interchange the source and uh, drain that will not work at all ok, is ok. So,
So, the first part is enough to get a working circuit, but these are necessary for single supply operation of both NMOS and PMOS. Okay. Any questions? So, what I mean by single supply operation is I mean I could have the from the same supply rails okay, I could for instance have NMOS amplifier as well. Okay. Our NMOS and PMOS have the usual parameters. The current factor is hundred microampere per volt square, and the threshold voltage ok. So, convert these things to PMOS and find this voltage. That is, I want the circuit to be operating with a single supply. So, you have to find out I mean you convert this to PMOS and connect it properly to the supply voltage okay. and we have other circuits also right. The operating point of the transistor should be exactly same as that of the NMOS. Question mark means you have to find the voltage with respect to ground, but in the PMOS case, not here. probably take a while to go through all four circuits. So, the first two columns you please try the first circuit, the next one, the next one, this column you try the third circuit and these two try the last one. Okay. Huh? So, the first two try this from that side. just show two of them the first and last, but you can figure out for yourself. That like I said if you are getting confused proceed systematically. So, originally this would have been called ground and what would be this voltage? What would be the voltage at the drain with respect to ground? Huh? 4 volts, why? 
3 volts, right? What is the VGS for 200 microamperes? VGS, we have 200 microamperes of drain current. This is 3 volts with respect to ground. So, you just reverse the polarity. and substitute n mos by p mos the source still remains here and i mean a variety of symbols are used for mos transistor but for analog purposes it's best to use the one which also has which also shows asymmetry which shows some difference between drain and source right so this is all this there to it so this uh, 6 volts now this voltage is minus 6 volts with respect to ground and this will be minus 3 volts right is not it? It will just be the opposite. Now, we do not want to call this the ground, we want to call that the ground. Okay. What does that mean? What happens in a circuit if you move the ground from one node to another and you want to find the new potentials, potentials with respect to the new ground, what do you have to do? It will just be an uh, all potentials will be changed by something. You know that what matters is the potential difference. So, really nothing has changed in the circuit. Okay. The absolute potential, what you label as absolute potential of a node has changed, that is all. So, if I make this the ground, this becomes ground. So, this 6 volts becomes 0. So, all voltages has to have to be incremented by plus 6, okay. And this minus 3 becomes minus 3 plus 6 or 3 volts, okay. And this would be 6 volts. And finally, you draw it upside down. Okay. So, like I said there is no great intellectual feat here, it is just following some fixed formula that is all. Okay. So, this is how drain feedback bias for PMOS will look like. What have we done here? If we have to derive it from scratch, we are comparing the current drain current of PMOS with this current and feeding back to the gate, you will find that it is in the correct direction. If you want a uh, PMOS current mirror, you can do that also by replicating this VSG across another transistor. If you do this, this will also be 200 microamperes. Okay. So, earlier we had only current sink, that is, we had an NMOS current mirror which would draw current. Now, we also have something that can push current. Okay. So, we have both types of uh, current sources. We do not know how to make the very first current source, but everything else we do have. Okay. Is okay. And similarly, the case with the op amp, again the same thing. What is that? PMOS current mirror. It will probably be more conventionally drawn with this facing the other way. Okay. It is the same circuit, I just drew it in a different way. That's all. Okay. So, now with NMOS and PMOS current mirrors, you can make any number of current sources of both directions. Okay. No, we have not shorted the gate and source of which one? Ah, gate and drain, we have shorted it to provide drain feedback around this and we are replicating VSG across that, here the assumption is that this and that transistor are matched perfectly. Okay. The, the, there is only one diode connected MOS transistor. Uh, yeah, I mean that is whether they are identical depends on the parameters. I have assumed identical parameters, but regardless the these two are matched. So, this will replicate the current, only the value of VSG here could be different from VGS there if the parameters are different. That is all. Okay. So, you can do this for uh, every circuit basically. Okay. I think I had 2 volts here and 6 volts and you can work out for yourself that this is equal into this is feedback to the source. this will make the two circuits identical, right. 
is okay. So, this voltage would have been if you call this the ground, it would be this is a 2 volts that is at 5 volts. Here, the source is at 2 volts again, and this is at sorry, force is at 4 volts, and this is at 1 volt, okay, with respect to this ground. Is okay. Any questions? So, for every one of these current sources, you also show the current mirrors and the biasing current sources and so on. You can make the circuit quickly look quite complicated, okay, whereas there was no real complexity there. No, I said you can make a circuit look very so, let us me take a what kind of amplifier is this? The input is here and the output is there. What sort of an amplifier is this? common source okay and what about this one second stage what kind of an amplifier is that also common source okay the source is grounded the input is applied here the output is taken there so now I can show like more details and then so suddenly I have now so many transistors, but there is no, nothing to be intimidated about this circuit is still a cascade of two common source amplifiers. These are the amplifying devices, these are for uh, biasing and these are also for biasing that is all. Okay. So, just because you see a lot of transistors I mean that is why you should understand the uh, fundamentals behind every circuit. Okay. So, that when you look at any circuit you should see what transistor is for what. Okay. It is not that difficult to draw a circuit with like 20 transistors, okay. but you should be able to understand the function of each one. and analyze properly right ok. So, so far we have NMOS and PMOS transistors and we have used them exactly for the same function control sources and so on. So, now we will say with some combination we can make uh, better circuits than what we did before ok.